I'm Tom Deakin from the University of Bristol in the UK. I'm going to talk about our recent survey of the performance we see for HBC style applications written in SQL 1.2.1. We've been exploring SQL since its release back in 2014, but recently there has been an influx of different implementations from vendors and the open source community. These new runtimes and compilers bring support for a wider range of devices than ever before. To give us broad coverage, we want to show results from CPUs and GPUs from as many vendors as we can. Here, we'll run on an Intel Xeon Skylake CPU along with fairly recent GPUs from Intel, AMD and Nvidia. To do this, we'll need to use a variety of those compilers and runtimes. The details of which platforms are supported where are in the full paper, so I'd encourage you all to take a look there. I'll just show this slide quickly. Here are the feeds and speeds of the different processors we're using. The theoretical peak memory bandwidth is in the far right column. We're not comparing processors against each other here to see which one is faster, so we'll always compare relative to the expected performance on, on each device in turn. We're going to look at three HPC style applications. They are all main memory bandwidth bound, which is in line with the vast majority of HPC applications today. They all have different levels of complexity. BabelStream is an implementation of the McAlpin Stream benchmark in many different programming models. It follows modern best practices for writing HPC codes today in comparison to the original stream. We look at three kernels in this study, copy, triad and dot. The triad kernel is similar to the parallel programming 101 vector edition, but one of the vectors is scaled by a constant. The copy kernel is just like a mem copy, and the dot kernel is a vector dot product and so requires a reduction operation. We have had a SQL implementation of this for a while now. BabelStream is really important as it sets a baseline for our expectations. If we can't get good performance with BabelStream, then we're very likely going to struggle with something more complicated. Heat is representative of a very common pattern in HPC, stencils. Here it is a five point stencil which for every cell in a 2D grid, computing a weighted average of the north, south, east and west neighbouring cells. This pattern occurs in finance difference codes and is memory bandwidth bound for large grids. It should get performance similar to the copy kernel in Babel stream. Cloverleaf is a mini app for a 2D hydrodynamics code. It's the largest code we look at, coming in at around 8,000 lines of code, excluding the usual things like comments, etc. There are 11 or so routines, each iterating over the 2D grid, performing either pointwise updates, just like BabelStream, or stencil updates, just like Heat. They are all mainly memory bandwidth bound, but some of the kernels use exponential and square root math library functions. All of these applications, including the SQL versions, are open source and can be found on GitHub. There are links to them in the paper. So, first to BabelStream. These are the results of running Triad on our devices. The chart shows the achieved bandwidth as a percentage of the theoretical peak of each device from the table before, so higher is better. We show SQL and OpenCL results for all the platforms, along with CUDA and HIP on the NVIDIA and AMD, respectively, and OpenMP on the Xeon CPU. Throughout all our results, we show the Iris Pro GPU as Nook, which is the, the device that it is in. In the full paper, we've included all the details of the compilers we used and how we built and ran everything. What is really promising is that on all these four devices, SQL attains similar performance to OpenCL. On all the GPUs, we achieve close to the expected bandwidth at around 80% of peak in both these programming models. We also see really close alignment to the results using the vendor's own closed programming models, CUDA and HIP. We use HIP SQL to run SQL code on these two discrete GPUs, and it's showing very little overhead over the direct implementations in the underlying models, which is great. On the Skylake CPU, SQL gets very close to the OpenCL result, which shows there is little overhead of the higher level abstractions in SQL over the low-level OpenCL. However, there is a clear performance gap between those and OpenMP. This is something we have seen with OpenCL on Intel Xeon platforms before, and it is a shame that this still exists today. However, what we do see is that the SQL performance is limited only by the underlying OpenCL performance. The dot product kernel requires a simple summation reduction operation, 
which has to be implemented manually in Sickle, OpenCL, CUDA and HIP. For each model, we've implemented the typical commutative parallel tree reduction, storing a partial result from each work group in local memory, to use the terminology from OpenCL and Sickle. The final reduction is performed on the host. OpenMP gives first-class support with a built-in global reduction, which we use here. Again, the Intel OpenCL runtime limits the performance on the CPU compared to OpenMP. The performance is lower than we saw from Triad, and we expect this is related to the use of local memory, which doesn't really relate to any physical memory locations on CPUs. The GPU driver, though, does not show this overhead, and the SQL performance is close to that of OpenCL on the NUC. On the NVIDIA GPU, we do see some overhead in HIPSICL over the native CUDA implementation. On the AMD GPU, we again see some overhead compared to the OpenCL implementation. However, notice that the HIP result, on which HIPSICL is based, is also lower than OpenCL, so the performance loss we see is coming from HIP directly. The copy kernel shows some more differences that are important to show. Note that there are no floating point operations here, it's just a simple memory copy on the device. Don't forget, the application we look at next, Heat, should achieve similar performance to this copy kernel. On the NVIDIA and AMD GPUs, we see that HIPSICL gives really good performance, close to the direct implementations and OpenCL. The Iris Pro GPU in the NUC similarly achieves performance to OpenCL. However, the Intel Xeon platform shows a wide range of results. As with the other Babel stream kernels, we see reduced performance of the OpenCL version compared to OpenMP on the Skylake. For the Sickle version, the Compute CPP compiler must be missing an optimization or introducing an overhead as the performance is lower than we would expect compared to the OpenCL result and the results we saw for the other kernels. Now, moving on to the heat code. This table shows the runtime and aggregate memory bandwidth as reported by the code. Obviously, these numbers are related, as the amount of memory moved is the same in all cases, so the bandwidth can be calculated from the runtime. As before, we only compare performance within a single architecture. We have two sickle versions here. The first uses a two-dimensional range, which launches a 2D kernel and indexes the memory accesses using a 2D sickle ID. The second manually flattens this to a one-dimensional range, launching a 1D kernel and linearizing the index by hand. Until recently, when implementations did this linearization of two and 3D iteration spaces and memory layouts, as stipulated by the SQL specification, there was a mismatch between that and the conventions of the underlying implementation. This in part comes from the fact that OpenCL didn't actually specify which dimension should be contiguous, but there was a convention in all the implementations which was the opposite to what was specified in SQL. Now all the major implementations have fixed this to take care of the mapping for you. On the Iris Pro integrated GPU we see really consistent performance between OpenCL and SQL. We see a similar situation on the AMD platform although the manual linearization of the index space does show an improvement. The OpenCL result was highly variable though so it's difficult to compare performance when this happens. On the Xeon, we see that OpenCL and OpenMP achieve similar performance for this code. Recall that for Babelstream there was a marked performance difference between these models, but that for this ever so slightly more complicated code, the performance gap closes. Unfortunately though, the SQL performance is lower than we might expect. However, as I'll show on the next slide, it does get a similar bandwidth to the Babelstream copy kernel. On the NVIDIA GPU, we observe good SQL performance, however we find OpenCL and CUDA performance is lower. This seems to be a driver issue as building and running both these codes on other NVIDIA platforms give good performance. As the heat code should show a similar performance to the copy kernel in Babelstream, this figure shows that comparison. We calculate the bandwidth modelled by heat as a percentage of that modelled by copy for each model in turn. So we're comparing OpenCL heat bandwidth to OpenCL copy bandwidth on each platform. The consistency of the NUC is clear to see here along with the performance degradation we saw on the NVIDIA platform for OpenCL and CUDA. On Xeon, we see that in fact we measure about 60% of copy bandwidth with OpenMP and SQL. Recall that OpenCL achieved a similar raw bandwidth to OpenMP here, but the copy number was low. 
We plot error bars here showing the minimum and maximum result we measured. The AMD platform gives highly variable results, particularly for OpenCL, but this variation seems more on this platform than for the other platforms. In conclusion then, we find that Sickle is achieving good performance on all the platforms, but as with all models they are reliant on the underlying software stack, so it's important that all vendors now push to mature them quickly. Cloverleaf is the largest application we look at here, about 8,000 lines of code, but is still classed as a mini-app. Production HPC codes can be up to some millions of lines of code. This chart shows the runtime on the different platforms, so lower is better. But remember, we aren't comparing across platforms to see which was faster overall. It's really promising to see that the Sickle performance was within 10% of the OpenCL performance. On the Iris Pro GPU, Sickle was actually faster. This comes from the advection kernels. We show the performance breakdown of all the kernels in the full paper, but in general they were otherwise all very close. On the NVIDIA GPU, it's the time step reduction kernel that is slower than on CUDA. We saw this with the dot kernel from Babelstream. On the Xeon, again, OpenMP gets the best performance, as we've seen for most of the other codes in this study. This again should be motivation for improvements to OpenCL on the Xeon, a necessary step for Intel and their One API product. Overall though, this is a really positive result for Sickle. This is a large application with many kernels, and on the whole, Sickle gets performance close to what is possible. This is all really good news for Sickle. We were able to write Sickle code that performed well across different platforms, both on the CPU and on GPUs from three different vendors. The Sickle code got close to the performance of a direct implementation in the model underlying those Sickle implementations. Don't forget to check out the full paper for all the other details and do look at our GitHub page to find all the source code. In particular, we hope that these applications can be included in everyone's benchmarks efforts as they develop and improve their own Sickle implementations. They should also serve as useful example applications to help with learning Sickle. Babelstream in particular is great for this as there are implementations in many other programming models so it's easy to compare Sickle with a model you already know but we need to quickly mature the Sickle implementations and ensure all vendors contribute to this effort. The recent announcement of support for NVIDIA GPUs inside Intel Sickle implementation inside LLVM is welcome news. The HPC community in general is converging around the LLVM watering hole, and so this is a fantastic place for vendors to contribute support for their own platforms. Sickle is designed to cope with using different compilers for different devices, but as a community, we must make sure it is easy for someone with Sickle code to compile and run it on any platform. This ecosystem is important to foster and it's crucial that the support is widespread from multiple vendors.